everybody, and welcome back to Yuki Kase Gaming. Today, we're going to be continuing a draft that we began previously of Neon Dynasty Kamigawa in MTG Arena. So, last time we completed the draft part, but we didn't actually complete the deck construction, so we're going to start with that. Just a moment to make a small adjustment. There we go. Okay, now that I'm not going to be randomly leaning over the entire recording. So, this was kind of a weird draft, and I started in black, and then I kind of almost circled back to black, but it never really happened. And as a result, I think I need to just take the black out. As cool as the Blade of the Oni is, I don't think I can necessarily justify running it just for that. Lethal Exploit is okay, and this is also okay, but it's just not worth going into another color over. So with that in mind, we need to make some cuts. The deck is currently 55 out of 40. And while it is possible to run more... Uh-oh. The auto mana is not turned on. Let's see if we can fix that. There we go. Okay. While it's not strictly necessary to stay... Exactly at 40 cards, uh, I think I've mentioned before, it is usually advantageous to do so. There's actually very few situations where it's better to not do that. Walking Skyscraper is kind of interesting. I could see maybe making a deck that plays around it, but... I don't know if this will be that deck. We'll leave it in for the moment, just to see if that kind of happens to come together. But, it's not a big priority for me. This could be a good game ender under the right conditions, but I think for the most part, it's just going to be... an expensive card that sits in my hand and slows me down. So I'm probably going to cut that. The Samurai is pretty good. Uh, the Goshen Tie of Ancient Wars is pretty strong just because it's a 2 2 first strike. And especially when you're doing black red, anything with first strike or double strike can be fairly powerful. Ambitious Assault isn't the worst. It can be a good finisher, but most of the time I don't necessarily want it in my deck. These are really, really strong, so if possible, I probably want to keep them. In fact, I'd most likely even cut the Goshintai first, since they have about the same cost. The Goshintai does have an extra added ability on it that gives it some attractiveness, but... eh, we'll see. Now, this would be good if I were running some kind of combo with it. But... Otherwise, it's just kind of a 2-2 two -two for 2, which isn't terrible, but I'm not sure if it's really what I want. Crackling Emergence I don't think is going to quite fit with this deck archetype. Probably don't need three of those.
very strange that it makes a white samurai token. Must be some lower reason for that. Okay, still have to cut 11 more cards. That's quite a bit. Oops. Another artifact enters. Um, I think I have better options right now. I think I'm gonna have to cut that synergy. And then... I can cut one of those, and this isn't a bad card, but it doesn't necessarily fit with my current strategy. So I might go ahead and cut that. Probably drop down to just one of those. This is a decent card, but it doesn't do exactly what I need it to.
It's very hard to choose. There's so many good things in here. And he has haste that makes him a good finisher too. I'll get rid of one of those. I guess he'll be my final cut. Okay. So now we've got a 40 card deck. And basically what this is looking to do is uh, early Moth Rider patrols allow for getting in with Blade Blizzard Kitsune or other ninjutsu if there is any. I think those might be the only ones though. Um, as well as just flying damage that's hard to block. And we've got a lot of uh, things like Aki War Paint and Ancestral Katanas that we can equip on them. Uh, with ac which actually have good synergy with the Moth Rider Patrols too, because they are technically warriors. And then we've got some removal. Uh, we've got a little bit of synergy with Light Paws, where if we play an Aki War Paint, we can get another one and attach it to them. So we've got a little bit of modified creature stuff going on as well. And then the, ideally what we want to do is get a really big Blade Blizzard Kitsune and whack them for lots and lots of double strike damage. And then if we need some way of finishing them off, we can get in there with something like Thundering Raiju or a sorry Captain, hopefully. And then we've got Iron Hoof Boar as an additional late game finisher. Uh, either as a creature or as an unexpected channel pump to one of our Blade Blizzard Kitsune, since making the Blade Blizzard Kitsune suddenly 5 attack and giving it trample means that it can get in there for as much as 10 damage, and even if they block it, it will probably kill something and still get in for significant damage. Okay, we'll give it a shot. Let's, um, let's, uh, change the, the deck box, too, because I don't think this is very representative. Here we go. Not that that has any impact on anything, but it didn't seem right to have the deck box be one of the only cards that we're not actually running. Alright, here we go! Everybody loves to hear a great comeback story, never give up. Yeah, I think those are especially entertaining. It really makes for some good drama when you manage to pull a win out from behind. That might have sounded a little dirtier than I intended. Okay, we've got both colors, we've got free land, we've got a couple things we can play, including one of our Blade Blizzard Kitsune. It would be nice if we had some earlier creature drops, since this is a very aggressive white-red deck. But that also means there's a pretty good chance we'll draw into some, so we'll go ahead and keep this.
pretty good early ninjutsu. May have actually benefited me to kill that with the intervention, but... Mm, we'll see. I think actually at this stage I'll go ahead and just get Blade Blizzard Kitsune on the field. Now, I'm supposed to be the aggressive player around here. Black green, huh? Black open. why I thought Light Paws had first strike. Definitely did not do that blocking correctly in that case. Oops. been thinking of a different card. What? Okay, well, I think this game's going to end up being an early loss for us. But we will get rid of that. Why not? We might as well block here. That death touch will be a problem for me later if I don't.
That weird ninjutsu might have actually kind of cost them the game. I don't know why they did that. They could have hard cast it after. All they gained was one damage. Okay, so, unless they have some kind of one black removal I don't know about, I think I'm about to win. Oh, only for tapped creatures. Hmm. Okay. Totally sure if this was the best move, but it did force them to block it. I have no choice but to block. And I drew a mountain. That is not going to win me this game. But wait! I can kill their swamp. Aha! <laughs> of course, killing this would have just, uh, made a giant spirit creature token. Would have been bad for me, anyway. Okay, an inauspicious start. There was a small misplay on my part there, but I'm not sure there's anything I could have done with the cards that I gotten to turn that around. It might actually be, as I play, that it might be a good idea to reduce the amount of land in the deck slightly and add in another small creature or something. It's not usually a good idea but when you're playing a very fast deck like this, sometimes it is advantageous. Okay, 
we'll, we'll try another game. See if maybe we can do a little better this time. That's a pretty interesting dragon surrounded by snakes in there. I am not sure if that's a specific card or if that's just some um, flavor art. I don't remember seeing that one yet. Okay, this is a hand I shouldn't keep. I've got a double white cost, no white mana in starting hand. We're gonna mull that. Oh boy, that's not great either, but, um... At least I can cast some stuff. I guess I'll... There's a mount. Uh, green, white this time. I thought that was a swamp for a second. It was so dark. I see your Blade Blizzard Kitsune with my Blade Blizzard Kitsune. Interesting. They made it a 3-5, but they didn't attack with it. Oh, it has reach now, too. Okay, so I have a choice. I could either tap them down right now, attack... And get some damage in and maybe kill their naturalist. Or I can tap them down at the end of their turn and banishing slash their blade blizzard kitsune, which seems like a better long term move. So we're gonna go with that. If they initiate attacks, I'll go ahead and tap down the blade blizzard kitsune too. Which I guess they will, just by nature, since they always go to the attack phase. Um. Oh, they tapped it for mana. That was interesting.
Oh, this might be the only aura I have. Maybe light pause doesn't actually work with this? Yeah. That has trample anyway. Might as well go in with everything. After this, I'll drop light pause for something else. It's not really having the synergy I anticipated with the deck. them on the defensive. They basically had... Well, okay, they didn't do it. Um, color me surprised. They did not block my Blade Blizzard Kitsune. Okay, they surrendered. Clean price. That'll work better. Open up this pack we just got. Nashi Moon Sage's Scion. Legendary creature Rat Ninja. Ninjutsu. Three colorless, one black. Casting cost one colorless, two black. Whenever Nashi Moon Sage's Scion deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of each player's library. Until end of turn, you may play one of those cards. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. That seems pretty darn strong. Even if you don't cast a spell, you might get a free land out of the deal. Assuming you can still play a land for the turn. Alright everybody, thank you for joining me on Yukikaze Gaming, I hope to see you next time. Bye bye, matane!